Hello, I'm Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today, I wanna to talk about the first quarter review. If you're new to owning your own practice or managing a practice or even managing a new practice, there are certain things at the beginning of the year that are important to be looking at, to be monitoring, because the first quarter of the year really sets the tone for the rest of the year. Now, if you are like me, you're probably feeling the hangover from the holidays, the last few weeks of the year, things don't get done as much as I usually like them to just because of things out of my control, people on vacation that I need to work with in order to get things done. And you know, a lot of businesses close the last week of the year between Christmas and New Year's. And also I think people are just feeling a little burnt out and really excited about the holidays and are usually not super motivated to get things done. And that's totally fine. It's the same every year, but anticipating that and then knowing what you're getting into the first month, the first quarter of the year, is super important. There are some major things that need to be monitored or at least considered the first month of the year, especially. And this isn't going to be everything, but there are big things that I liked to focus on because sometimes we develop some bad habits in our practice, especially the staff as year goes on, you know, the first of the year, they know about stuff, they need to be doing stuff. And then, you know, you get to the middle end of the year and they don't have to do it as much because a lot of patients are repeat or a lot of things have been coming in and you just take for granted, you don't need to do it anymore. And then you forget you need to start doing it again at the beginning of the fall year and specifically what I'm talking about is checking patients registration information like their addresses phone numbers and insurance information as well as collecting co-pays and collecting patient balances of course they should be collecting co-pays and patient balances throughout the year that shouldn't change but Sometimes, depending on your specialty and your volume of patients, maybe people hit their out-of-pocket maximum so they don't have to collect co-pays, or maybe people have hit their deductibles and they don't have a ton of patient balance and they pay it right away or something like that. But the first part of the year, a lot of patients, most patients have their deductibles start over, which means staying on top of the patient collections is super important. They should be collecting money throughout the year, but making sure that they're reminded to collect any balances that are old or new ones that come up when patients check in is even more important during deductible season. That's because your practice is going to be relying on patient money, patient payments in order to be able to pay your bills. And if they forget about that, they've gotten a little lackadaisical about it. It's your job as the provider owner, as the manager to remind them and be monitoring those payments every day, looking at the book, seeing what was collected, comparing it to patients that were on the schedule. And if they had balances, if they were reconciled or not, or made a payment towards it or not because if they're not, you need to be calling out your staff on this. You need to be re-educating them. If they're not listening, maybe they need some kind of um, reprimand or some kind of write-up because it is the health of your business, especially if you're a small practice, you really rely on that. And if they don't understand that, then that could be detrimental to your business. Unfortunately, it's just kind of the nature of the beast and that's something that needs to be looked at. Also making sure that they are updating patient insurances. Whether patients say they have the same insurance or not, they should still be asking for the current insurance card. They should be checking it to what's in the system to make sure that it matches, checking the numbers, because sometimes even though patients stay on the same insurance, they might have a number change in their subscriber ID. And that will affect downstream. That will affect the claims. They'll get rejected, they'll get denied, and that delays the processing of claims, which means it delays money coming into your practice, whether the insurance is gonna pay towards it or it goes to patient responsibility and this statement needs to be sent out, you're delaying that process even further. So making sure that they are physically looking at insurance cards, comparing to what's in the system and scaling in new ones is essential to the revenue cycle, especially at the beginning of the year. 
The other thing they need to make sure they're checking are patient addresses and patient phone numbers. Because if you have a question because maybe their insurance gets denied or rejected the claim, maybe they forgot to give you their new insurance card and you have to call them and say, hey, but if you don't have a good phone number, how are you gonna contact them? Or maybe you need to send a patient statement because it goes to patient responsibility and it gets kicked back because it's not a good address or the patient doesn't live there anymore. That's gonna be a delay in payment as well. So making sure that your front desk understands the gravity of their responsibilities and how it affects the income, the revenue stream into your practice is really important, giving them that why that perspective and making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I always would have a meeting the last month of the year and it would be around early December with my staff and I'd say, okay, remember first of the year is coming up. This is what's expected of you. This is what I will be checking on you for. I will be watching you closely and just give them a heads up, a courtesy. So those are the top things that I wanted to talk about. The other things are watching claims process and come in and finding out how much is getting denied, how much is getting rejected at the clearinghouse, finding out the reasons why. So upstream you can fix anything and correct that so it doesn't continue to reject and deny claims because again, you're delaying your claim payments from coming in, your claim adjudications. Because if they're not paying towards the claim because it's going to deductible, you still have to get that posted in your system and a statement generated to the patient, mailed to the patient, and it just, that is a longer process. So anything you can do to send out clean claims the first time is important. And this is important year round, don't get me wrong, but especially the first of the year because of deductible season and relying on patients to pay. You also want to be looking at those claim adjudications because you want to see how much is getting paid, make sure nothing has changed, making sure there's no credentialing issues. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but it seems like a lot of insurance companies like to change over their portals or their systems that they use at the beginning of the year, whether it's February, January, March, it's like the first quarter, and it really can throw a wrench in things. I mean, if they don't have it set up correctly or they have glitches, it affects your claims processing. And I've experienced this with a few different insurances, unfortunately, throughout the country. And because of that, it's important to be watching and identifying trends and being like, well, that didn't happen last year and nothing has changed for us because it could be something at the payer that changed that you don't know about until you see these. So if you can identify it as soon as possible and contact them and say, hey, what's going on? You can hopefully try to figure something out, a workaround, or they fix it faster, but you have to pay attention to this stuff in order to identify it. The other things you wanna pay attention to are patient scheduling. How many new patients are you getting? Do you need to hit the streets a little bit more to referring providers to see if you can get more new patients? Or are you having to push patients out because you have such a large demand to be seen for your patients that you, they're scheduled out too far? And maybe start having a conversation with your owner provider if you're not that person and saying, how are we gonna fix this? We wanna see our patients as soon as possible. We don't want them to go somewhere else. The things that need to be looked at, it's almost like a clean slate, right? And um, I, I, I have another video and it's about the inventory of things that need to be done throughout the year that you should be doing an assessment on at the beginning of the year to plan ahead for that entire year. So look at that too because this really goes hand in hand with that. Things to be monitoring and then things to anticipate. It, it really just gels together. And so many things come up on day to day and I understand that, but it's really important to be organized and to be aware because if your staff knows you're aware, the providers know you're aware, patients know you're aware, that makes a large difference, I promise you, just that impression. The last thing that I'm going to talk about of things to look at are your policies and procedures. If you didn't get time at the end of last year, the last quarter to kind of look over this, it's really important to look at your patient policies, your HR and staff policies, your operations, and then also your 
paperwork that goes with those. So, you know, any kind of documents that the patients need to sign when they come in, they should be signing, you know, some new financial agreements at the beginning of the year. Hopefully you're doing that. If not, I would be getting that updated and make sure it looks good and asking your front desk for them to start acknowledging new financial agreements. But if they need a new HIPAA agreement, maybe doing that as well. But looking at your policies and procedures, uh, policies is uh, you know pretty obvious. But procedures, maybe last year things really changed in your workflows. You added new services, you've added new staff or departments. You had to adapt new workflows for something, and you haven't updated your SOPs. So that is a perfect time right now to do that because then you can you know say January 2024 at the bottom, and then you will know that everything is refreshed and good to go for the rest of the year. If you have any questions or comments about this, please leave that in the comments below. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful and share with anybody whom you feel would benefit. I wish you all a very successful and happy new year. Take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.